In this video, we'll use Excel to explore linear transformations, some of the important mathematics behind computer graphics. So let's first take a little tour of some of the linear transformations we can look at in Excel. Here we have a rotation, a slider to control it. Yeah, I was pretty proud of myself when I figured this one out. Here we have a dilation, it's kind of shrinking and stretching come out the other side here and we'll go back now let me just point out that with the input here our axis only goes up to 8 and with the output the axis goes up to 400 so these pictures are a little bit misleading on what's going on with the dilation because actually this thing is getting a whole lot bigger all right let's take a look at a shear this is a horizontal shear the kind of transformation that, among other things, turns a regular font into an italics font. Okay, now I'm not going to start from scratch here, but let's take a look at what's going on here. How did I make all of these things? So this is not quite a project for beginners, but take from it what you can. Okay, now over here I have our initial points, the input and that's in the matching graph here. You might notice that I have the same point 1, 3 over here as I do over here, which is what allowed me to make a figure that closes, which was something I wanted to do. I also, for the rotation, wanted to make a figure that was not symmetric, because I think that illustrates the rotation better. With, um, with something like the shear, I thought the rectangle illustrated it better. So you can use whatever kind of figure you want. Now a couple other important things for setting this up. One of the things is that when we do the chart type, I made this a scatter plot. And I choose one of the things with lines. If you don't make it a scatter plot, it won't actually plot all the points. So most non-statistical math things that you do with Excel, if you want to graph them, you need to use some kind of the scatter plot. Another thing that's really important that actually took me a while to figure out is that you need to make sure that the graph will not automatically scale itself because that really hides from seeing the motion that you want to see. You see the motion of Excel rescaling the axes. So what you do here, you need to do this with both axes, but you right click on an axis, pick format axis, and then up here in the scale you need to make sure that none of these buttons are checked under auto so it won't automatically scale. You can put the scale in yourself over here. Okay, so that's the points in the graph. Now, the, in the blue we have the points after they've been transformed and to transform them, form them we multiply by a matrix. Let me point out right now, here is where I have the angle and I can I can actually do this by hand so let's say I put in 39 degrees it'll rotate or I don't know something else 165 degrees that's the rotation we have here and you see this matrix is changing and we use this matrix to get these points so this is a rotation matrix I'm not going to go into all the math here but this is a great application of trig sometimes students don't really get why trig is important and this is one of the many reasons why trig is important. So in the upper left entry I have cosine and then I change to radians because my original angle is in degrees and for the cosine function I need radians of what's in cell I13. Okay, upper right I have minus sine of the same thing. Bottom left I have plus sine of the same thing. And the bottom right I have cosine. So that's a rotation matrix. Now in all of these, all of the other things I showed you, they all pretty much work the same way except for that they have different equations for their matrices. That's what really changes. So then up here in order to get x prime, I multiply, I'm just multiplying xy by the matrix to get x prime and y prime. If you don't know about matrices, this isn't really going to make a lot of sense, but um, sorry about that. It's worth learning about. 
So over here, I'm multiplying by the top row of the matrix. That's the top left entry times what's in A2 plus the top right entry times what's in B2. And the Y prime is similar, but just uses the bottom row. So that's how I compute the coordinates of the point over here. And as I showed before, if I change the angle, I get new coordinates. I get a new matrix. It gives me new coordinates. I get a new graph. So now let's look at how to change the angle automatically with a slider, which is where the fun comes in. So what you need to do here is you go up to the View menu, and you choose Toolbars and Control Toolbox. Okay, and you can see right here on the upper left there's this kind of architect's triangle kind of thing and that puts you in design mode. So I'm going to click on that. That's where we want to be. Oh, and then I'm also going to pick one of these elements that I want. I want a scroll bar, which is this one. You can put toggle buttons and things. So now I just right click to put where I want my scroll bar, right click and drag, and I have this nice scroll bar. And I have a menu here that's going outside of the video window, but I want to choose properties and set up my scroll bar. So, oh, sorry, gotta get the cursor in the right place. So there's only two things I need to change on this whole list. The link cell, I have to say which cell I want my angle in this case to go into. So that was I13. And then the other thing I want to change is the max. Okay, I'm going to make this max 360 for the angles. We'll just, we'll just go through by one degree at a time. Now with the other, some of the other transformations where I actually wanted to get negative numbers for this the, the numbers that could appear from the could that could appear from what I did with the scroll bar. If I wanted to get a negative number, I had to actually use another function to get it subtract subtract something, um, which is another thing to do that's tricky if you don't know it, but not not too bad if you're comfortable with this stuff. So I'm clicking out of design mode here so I can actually use my slider. And you see, there we have it. It looks good. And as I said, in, in these other ones, I used different, different matrices. You can see the, the matrix changes when I do this. This is a shear matrix. This is a dilation matrix. And that is a little bit about illustrating linear transformations with Excel.